On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to paint baseboards over carpet, so make sure you stay tuned. Hi friends, welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So you want to paint your baseboards, but you don't want to paint your carpet. First, you want to determine what kind of carpet that you have. This one is the most popular type. It's called the texture carpet, also known as a twist carpet. It's the most popular indoor carpet style. Then you have the Berber carpet or loop carpet. It's dense construction. And you have the pattern carpet combination and the other, other types of carpets. Whatever carpet that you might have, it's quite similar what you're going to do with the technique to paint the baseboard over the carpet. If we zoom in where the baseboard and the carpet meets, you can see that the hair of this carpet touches the face of the baseboard. Get yourself a putty knife or a drywall knife. This one's a four inch drywall knife. So just go where your baseboard and your carpet meet, take your time and just push down the hairs or tuck them in just so that you can prepare it for the next step. Since there are long hairs on this carpet, I think it's best for me to just push it and tuck it inside. There's multiple ways on how to do this. So on this video, I'm gonna be showing you multiple ways. So the first method that we're gonna use is the masking tape method. Now I'm just taking the blue masking tape and I'm gonna go over and let it touch the edge. And you wanna leave about 1 8 inch excess onto where the baseboard and the carpet meets. Don't go directly onto it, leave about 1 8 inch lip, and then go along to the very end. You don't wanna press down on this too hard, you just wanna let it float and let it lightly touch the face of the baseboard. And then once you're done, you're gonna take your four inch or five inch knife or your putty knife. It's better to use a four inch or a six inch putty knife so you can get more coverage on the surface area. And then you are gonna go lightly, push down on the masking tape and tuck that in. It would help to hold one end of the masking tape and then just push down and tuck this in inside the baseboard. Notice how I didn't tape the masking tape onto the baseboard. This lightly putting it against it will help you push it down and tuck it in. I like to go over it one more time with my knife and just go underneath and just put a little bit of pressure and just run it all the way through back and forth just so that I know that it's nice and stuck on the carpet underneath and it won't move when I start painting this. I wanna mask off the top area as well. Now you can use the regular masking tape, but what I prefer to use is frog tape. It holds a lot better and it does make clean lines and it doesn't let any paint go through it. So I highly suggest invest yourself on some frog tape. Again, all the tools and materials that I use on this video, I'll leave the link all in the description down below. Check out those links if you're interested or you need the materials. Notice how this drywall does not have any texture, so it's more prone into ripping if we do put adhesive on top. So take note, if you have texture on here and you're applying some masking tape, be very, very careful. Don't put it or press it too hard. Now take your time on this. It doesn't have to be super straight. And just go on to the edge. You don't want to push this super hard. Take your fingers and run it lightly where the baseboard and the masking tape meets. Now you have a clear separation from drywall and carpet and you have isolated your baseboard. Now that you have isolated your baseboard, this is actually the perfect time to do any repairs, whether you have any scuffs, you have um, dents or any bite marks from pets or maybe you have these little holes from brad nails. These are the perfect time to fill in these holes, sand them and make it perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill all these holes from these brad nails. This is a wood filler by Elmer's natural color and it's perfect for that. It's quick drying. Again, if you're interested on this one too, I'll leave the link on the description down below. I'm going to squeeze a little bit out. After a few minutes, this should be ready to sand. I'm taking my sanding block. This is 120 grit. And we should just be able to lightly sand off that wood filler. Now 
I would get a rag, wet it down, and you want to wipe off the surface or the face of the baseboard just so that you can have a nice clean surface so that the paint will stick a lot better. So I got some leftover paint here that I transferred onto my touch-up cup. Put a little bit of paint on there. Now just take your brush and paint along just like so. You can see where all the paint got into the masking tape. That's how you protect your carpet. But you see where all the paint strokes are. You can see the paintbrush, the pretty much the hair fibers and the strokes of the paintbrush. I don't like it personally. What I like to use is a roller for this so that you can have that nice texture, roll on spray like texture. That one came close. Okay. After you use your paintbrush, just let it sit onto a cup of warm water. Just let it soak right there. It'll be easier to clean. And I like to put a little roller in there as well. A few times, just run it over some hot water under your sink. And you should have a nice clean brush and a nice clean roller so you can reuse this for the next job. Now that you got the baseboard painted, here's a tip. I like to take out the masking tape on the top and leave the one on the bottom. The reason why I take this off while the paint is still wet is so that in case you put paint right here, it doesn't leave any cracking on the edges where the masking tape and the baseboard meet. I take this nice and slow because if you go too fast, you might end up tearing up the face of the drywall paper, just like what happened here. This is just a mock-up and it's not painted. This is fresh drywall. But if this was textured and painted, this wouldn't, you have a least amount of chance of this happening. But since it's just fresh drywall paper, it is starting to tear just like what you see here. Okay, so just take that into account. If you take this off early and the paint is still wet, there's a possibility that the paint at the top will start to go and drip onto the carpet. So just wait a few minutes for this to dry and then you can take out the bottom. Now that it's been a few minutes and if you think the paint is fully dry, take your drywall knife or you can even use your little putty knife, it's up to you. Just go underneath and start to break away that paint. Gently just push down where that masking tape is tucked in underneath that baseboard. Run it right across so that you can break that dried up paint. Just slowly take this out. There you go. That's one method. Let me show you another method. Another method that you can do without using any masking tape and you can just run it along pretty fast is using a longer drywall knife. Now this is a 10 inch drywall knife. If you have a 12 inch or longer one, much better. So this method is actually better if you have a Berber carpet or some sort of pattern carpet where the hair on the carpet is not as long and it's more compressed down. But if you have something like this, it, this will work as well. Take this knife and tuck it underneath. And while you're tucking this underneath the baseboard, you're pushing down as well on the carpet. You can take your paintbrush and run it along here. The only thing that you gotta do with this method is you still need to put masking tape on the top. Now, unless you're super you know, professional and you can do a nice cut with your paintbrush at the top and you don't need one. But as for DIYers, we're not professionals. That's why I'm showing you this so that you can do it nice and clean first time. But the only issue that you're gonna have with this is that if you put too much paint over up here and you wait, and you take this out after you paint it, there's a possibility that the paint will continue to drip down below. And now you have a puddle of paint that is going to your carpet and puddling at the bottom. So the advantage of this method is that you can run it nice and quick because you can just tuck it in, paint, go to the next area, push down the carpet, paint, and so forth. If you don't have masking tape, you can also look around for wax paper or packing paper, or construction paper like this one. And you can go and place it underneath. There you go. You can go ahead and paint it. And once you're done, you can just pull it off like that. So there you have it friends. Those are my three methods on how to paint baseboards over carpet. 
If you have any other methods that you'd like to share with the community, please leave it in the comment section down below. And also let me know in the comment section down below which method out of the three you prefer and which actually you use that works and which one would you recommend. Again, friends, if you find this video super helpful, please hit that big thumbs up, press the subscribe and notification bell, and I'll see you friends on the next video.